I'll take you through the cautionary statements. And on, on April 26, we uh, announced uh, a, a, very, a material transaction uh, with the with the acquisition of Roxco. Uh, on slide five here, we have some of the highlights. We're basically create, creating a, a, a platform uh, for low cost production. We, we are creating a company that if you're an, an investor in the intermediate precious metals space, it will be hard for you not to consider uh, the pro forma company. Uh, we're uh, putting together, bringing together the quality assets. And uh, post-transaction, the combined company will have a production of approximately 450,000 ounces of uh, uh, gold equivalents. Uh, but more importantly, at an all-in sustaining cost of uh, under $1,000 per ounce. Something that as CEO, I'm uh, most excited about uh, is uh, the fact that we are bringing together two quality teams, two teams, uh, operating teams, exploration teams, uh, really two business platforms uh, guided by, by what I call this overachievers, no? uh, teams that have excelled each on their own jurisdiction. So we're bringing uh, key executives from the Roxbowl team under the Fortuna umbrella. And again, as CEO, that's something I'm most excited about. Uh, we are creating a diversified complementary portfolio of, of assets uh, <clears throat> with a projected EBITDA from the from sales of half a billion dollars. But more importantly, uh, operating with an EBITDA margin in the range of 40 to 50 percent. If you look at the Q1 performance of Fortuna uh, in, in Q1, we generated sales of $117 million in the quarter, uh, EBITDA of $60 million, but our EBITDA margin was at uh, 52%. Uh, we uh, beat uh, street estimates for earnings per share. Uh, the consensus was 10 cents. We came in at 14 cents per share. So what we have here is, uh, uh, in Fortuna, is a robust business platform in the precious metal space with high margins and, uh, we like Roxwell because it's constructive on that, no? Uh, quality assets with high margins. So we are bringing together uh, strength on strength. We have an, an attractive near cash, uh, near term free cash flow profile with a robust uh, pipeline of high upside exploration assets. Uh, the the Roxwell assets. Uh, something that exhibit, and and, and 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 I invite you to to look at, uh, at that if you're not acquainted with the company. It's a tremendous success that Roxco has been exhibiting on the exploration front. We have high degrees of conviction on the upside of the all of the properties, the producing properties, the exploration package uh, on the Roxco portfolio. Uh, the combined company will benefit from from a larger size and and even. Uh, now more than ever, size in the business does matter. Uh, we are all, we all management groups in, in, in the natural resource space are uh, have to meet high heightened uh, standards with respect to governance, ESG, and uh, a high margin business and size is what uh, makes for uh, companies to effectively deliver on those heightened expectations from our investor base. And uh, also important and, and something to highlight here is that Fortuna uh, on a pro forma basis will retain a uh, significant silver contribution to revenue. And we remain committed to silver uh, out of nine, uh, drill rigs turning today in the Americas, eight are pursuing silver opportunities. So we remain committed to silver, and that's something I'm going to elaborate more as we go down the presentation. Uh, but more importantly than, than silver, which we love, 
is uh, we are committed to a healthy business of high margins in the precious metal space. In slide six, we share some of the benefits to Fortuna shareholders and, and Rock School shareholders on the transaction. Uh, a lot of the things that we indicate here in the slide, I, I already mentioned. Uh, but on the Rock School side, if, if uh, there is something I can I can highlight, is the fact that uh, in the combined entity we are de-risking the business moving forward and uh, lowering the cost of capital. No, from a larger production umbrella, uh, from a larger production base. The, the risks associated to facing the construction of Seguela, which is imminent in, in the third quarter, we believe that that construction decision will be made on the Seguela project. Um, you know, the balance sheet of the new company makes the funding requirements completely manageable from the balance sheet uh, perspective. And uh, instead of relying on, on one source of free cash, uh, being the Yaramoco mine, uh, the Proforma company will have a free cash flow generation coming from four mines immediately after a transaction. Right? On slide seven, we share the footprint for the company, for the Proforma company. We'll be uh, operating throughout the Americas and in West Africa. I have received uh, over the course of uh, the last weeks since announcement again on April 26th, questions about uh, why West Africa? And uh, the market tends to box us as a Latin American operator or a West African operator or a North American operator, or, or sometimes the market tends to put us in a box by commodity type, a coal producer, a copper producer, or silver. And that's easy to understand and, and manage from the investor perspective. But what we are proposing here is that you view us as a value investor, because at the core, that's what we are. We believe the value proposition of bringing these two companies together is uh, immense. Uh, it ticks all the boxes. And although West Africa is uh, across the ocean, literally, across the Atlantic, uh, it is a mining jurisdiction. We're not just going anywhere. Uh, the largest gold producer in the world is China, with about 380 tons of gold produced a year. Uh, if we group the production of uh, this small geographic area, which is West Africa, and, and, and we add the production of uh, Ghana, Burkina, uh, Cote d'Ivoire, uh, Mali, Senegal, it amounts to about 360 tons annually, uh, right behind China and ahead of uh, countries like Australia, uh, Canada, uh, the US, Russia, uh, Peru. So uh, this small geographic area is over, over the last years has consolidated as one of the uh, most exciting uh, uh, jurisdictions or, or regions uh, for gold production. There is no other region in the world that exhibits the type of growth in gold production and resources in the ground that West Africa does. On a pro forma basis, uh, looking at the bar charts here on the upper left, uh, here leading all in sustaining cost under $1,000. Uh, gold production, as I stated at the beginning of the presentation, in, in, in the range of uh, 450,000 ounces of gold immediately after uh, the transaction closes. Um, EBITDA in the lower left hand uh, bar chart, uh, peer leading EBITDA in the range of half a billion dollars. More importantly, all of this translates into uh, healthy free cash flows. No? And uh, that's what we show in the uh, bar chart on the lower right hand. I'll stop here in slide nine for a minute to, to talk about a silver contribution to revenue, which is important to, to a lot of our investors. Uh, 
on the upper left hand uh, chart, we show um, the pro forma silver contribution uh, of, of uh, to revenue for, for various companies. So on the right, we show the pro forma for tuna. And uh, on top of the bar, you see a 22%. That's a silver contribution to revenue for, 2020, for 2021. Um, in the first quarter of the year, our silver contribution to revenue as a standalone uh, entity was 39%. So yes, our, our silver contribution to revenue will drop uh, post-transaction as gold production increases, uh, gold contribution to revenue increases. Um, so silver contribution moving forward will be around 22%, 25% in that range. But if you look at other silver producers like Hawkshaw Mining, where silver contribution is 40%, Core Mining, another silver producer with silver contribution of 25%, Pan American Silver with silver contribution of 34%, Pan American being an iconic silver producer, Hecla, uh, 25%. So, the conundrum for silver producers is how you grow your business, maintaining the health of, of your business, and also uh, an attractive silver exposure. And, and it's very difficult. And that's why we see most silver producers gradually over time uh, gra uh, gravitating towards uh, more gold production. Uh, and the key here is uh, maintaining the health of the business, maintaining the high margins of the business. And as I stated at the beginning, as much as we love silver, uh, whatever asset we bring into our portfolio needs to meet certain very key criteria, like EBITDA margin, for example, a simple one. No, a low cost, high margins uh, uh, assets. In slide 10, this would be the, the, the portfolio uh, pyramid for the pro forma company where you see uh, four operating mines, a development project in Seguela. Seguela is a most exciting development project. It's a permitted feasibility stage project uh, primed for a construction decision in the third quarter of this year. Uh, Seguela for the next years will be uh, will be um, producing about 130,000 ounces of gold a year for the initial six years with a life of mine projection of nine and tremendous exploration upside. At the bottom of the pyramid, we see our ex the, the combined company's exploration portfolio uh, with a Bosura at the top. Bosura is in, in, in uh, Burkina. It's a, a very exciting advanced exploration project where the Rocks Gold team right now is expecting to produce a first resource estimate in the second half of the year. And uh, below that, just a diversified portfolio of, of uh, exploration opportunities throughout West Africa and the Americas. In, with uh, two groups of overachievers, two, two operating teams that have uh, proven uh, themselves as, as uh, successful uh, operators, being able to develop, build, and operate successfully uh, each in their own jurisdiction. So Paul Cridello as chief operating officer uh, in Roxwell remain, will remain as chief operating officer for, for the, in the combined company, looking after African operations. Paul Whedon, a, a key individual for the success of the exploration programs Roxwell exhibits over the last years. Um, also remains as a VP Exploration West Africa, Eric Gratton, who is the man based in Abidjan in Cote d'Ivoire, who spearheads the relationships with the uh, Burkinabi and, and, and uh, Cote d'Ivoire governments, also remains uh, with the team and, and, and all the cadre of uh, officers and, and, and uh, uh, employees that make uh, Rockwell a successful business every day on the operations and and exploration side. And of course, the Fortuna team, right, which is known, uh, and, and again, our track record show for the excellence in delivery that we continuously show. 
looking at uh, our operations, just a quick run, you know, our, our newest mine, Lindero, which is currently in the final stages of ramp up in Argentina. It's a large uh, gold copper uh, porphyry, so it's an open pit hip leach operation. So, uh, no, I was just giving a, a brief uh, uh, run through our, our Lindero mine in, in uh, Argentina, which is in the final stages of ramp up. And uh, here we show the, the an exciting exploration opportunity we have within our property at Lindero, which is cool. So, you know, just moving through the slides, uh, what here what we try to show is uh, the exploration potential in our properties here at San Jose, where we have multiple exploration opportunities. <clears throat> We're drilling on, 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 on the immediate vicinity of existing resources and reserves in the underground mine and also pursuing uh, multiple uh, uh, other opportunities in the greater land package, right? And here uh, at the Cayoma mine, also a well-developed vein system where we're as well pursuing opportunities uh, near and around or, or resources and also in other veins in, in, in the greater district. And uh, we also have greenfields initiatives in the Americas, mainly in Mexico and Argentina today. We're currently drilling the Santa Fe project in, in the state of Sonora in Mexico. And uh, we're preparing to drill the Baborigami and, and the Cerro Lindo project in Argentina. Moving on to West Africa, uh, as I stated at the beginning of the presentation, no, it's, a, it's just a, a, a well endowed uh, the endowment of gold in this Birimian greenstone belt is is uh, is uh, you know. It, has led uh, the region to be ranked um, as the largest uh, growing uh, region in the world in terms of gold production and gold resources in the ground. And um, the company Roxgold has uh, the Yeramoco mine in production, the Bosura as an advanced exploration project, both in Burkina and Seguela, which is the development project I, I mentioned earlier. Yaramoco is a 1,500 ton per day underground mine that produces approximately 120,000 ounces a year. It currently has a life of mine reserve for seven years. And Seguela, which is a permitted development stage project, no? uh, a construction decision is expected in the third quarter of this year. Something we, we are most excited about and, and, and I have high degrees of, of conviction uh, is the exploration potential on all of the Roxwell properties. No? Uh, this uh, slide here, 21, uh, shares with you uh, a new discovery in the Seguela complex, which is the project. Uh, Seguela is composed of uh, various uh, deposits uh, like uh, Antena and CN. Uh, and Ancula here, which was discovered in September of last year, and as the team there has been able to quickly advance it and, and uh, into uh, and, and included in the recently published feasibility study. Uh, the feasibility study for Seguela is dated in, in early April. Uh, but here, results speak for themselves. Here, what you see is you know noticeable. Uh, worth noting is four meters with 100 grams gold, 13 meters with four grams, 15 meters with 24 grams. I mean, and I can go on and on and on. It's a high grade near surface uh, system that remains open at depth. And just like Kula, uh, they have a recent discovery also called uh, Sandberg, which is not at the research state, uh, stage yet. But uh, the, at Seguela, they have 36,000 hectares, with ex which exhibits tremendous exploration potential. That's something we're most excited about. Um, so in addition to Seguela, there is Bosura and, and uh, in, in Burkina, which is also a very exciting high-grade type uh, deposit. And I can easily envision uh, this uh, project, Bosura, moving ahead into early stages of scoping, engineering, uh, in, in 18 months with some luck with the drill bit. Uh, 
uh, and the company has 250,000 hectares in multiple concessions spread throughout the Bidimian Greenstone Belt, this very productive uh, um, rock assemblage in, the, in Côte d'Ivoire. Slide 23, just some highlights on the, on the pro forma company capitalization. The liquidity position of the company would be around 200 million immediately after transaction. Closes, uh, and something worth highlighting here again, here is the, the, the debt to EVITA in the company uh, would be, you know, below 0.5, no? So, some transactions put pressure or even compromise the balance sheet. In this case, uh, we retain a lot of strength on the balance sheet throughout this uh, uh, combination, in spite of the capital requirements for Seguel. The capital for Seguel is estimated at around 150 million. Uh, production on a pro forma basis, 70% of production would come from the Americas, and about 30% from, from West Africa. And uh, in slide 24 here, we show some of the me metrics that we already mentioned. No? The combined EBITDA, around half a billion dollars a year, strong free cash flow generation, growing every year, uh, and uh, the very competitive all-in sustaining cost at under $1,000 per ounce. This slide uh, just represents some comparables. I invite you to look at it uh, in, in our website. Uh, this presentation is available on our website, but shows, you know, how the company would rank among the uh, peer group of, of, of companies. Also some uh, comparables and a pie chart showing the geographic breakdown of uh, gold in, in gold equivalents in reserves and, and, and gold production, right? So in, in summary, what we're doing here is creating an, an intermediate producer, a diversified global intermediate producer with industry leading margins. And uh, with a reserve base of 4 million ounces of gold equivalents, with additional resources of 1 million ounces equivalent, uh, with average, uh, you know, with estimated EBITDA in the range of half a billion dollars, but more importantly, with EBITDA margins in the range of 40 to 50 percent, which is something we treasure in our business, those healthy margins. So with that, I will uh, conclude the presentation, uh, Mark. And I'm sorry for the inconvenience with the connection. I am in Peru right now, and I don't enjoy the best inter internet connection. I appreciate that, Jorge. Thank you. We did get some great information, and uh, this is the nature of our world today as we all gather virtually, but I appreciate your patience as well and uh, sharing all the insights and the wisdom that you've brought to the group today. We actually have a great list of questions that have been coming in, so uh, if we'll just get moving into the question and answer period. Our first question up here is, what was the rationale behind the announcement of the business combination with Rox Gold, and when did the due diligence process begin? Yes, the you know I'll start with your with the second part of your question. Mm -hmm. uh, Rocks Gold is an old acquaintance of us, and to give you a briefly background, I, in 2015 I did a screening, a worldwide screening for the highest grade silver and gold deposits and mines in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, we scratched out of the, that list the, the jurisdictions where we wouldn't go, like Russia, China. And, and there are many places where we will not do business. And uh, Rockswell was uh, one of the companies that remained. So back in 2015, I took to the endeavor of traveling, visiting the assets, getting to know the management groups. And that's when we first uh, became acquainted. 2015 was not the time for neither them nor us to do a deal. But I was always impressed by the quality of the assets, but more importantly, by the quality of the team. I think John Dorward put together an, an A team, and, and uh, I always kept an eye on, 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 on a watch on, on how they grew their business. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I think they did the same with us. And, and, and it was easy to become uh, reacquainted back in October of last year when we started uh, uh, moving on some of the M&A initiatives that we had. And uh, really, the value proposition that we see in Roxwell, uh, it's, I believe, hard to, hard to uh, match. Mm -hmm. 
even though it's a geographic departure for us, even though it's in, in, in some eyes a, a commodity departure moving from silver more into a gold uh, asset. Uh, what we propose here is that we look at the fundamental value here yes. and, and the margins of the business. To put simply, in, you create value over time in this business by identifying quality assets and delivering operational and financial discipline. Mm -hmm. But everything starts with the quality of the assets. Understood. And the jurisdiction as a departure, I don't see it as such because West mm -hmm. Africa, even though it's far away from Latin America, it's a mining jurisdiction. It's a place where you can effectively permit and, and, and develop and, and operate your mines. Correct. And uh, so from that perspective, I don't see it, I don't find it as a big departure. Yes, yes there are different complexities and that's why we had make, have made sure that we have retained the core team of executives that make Roxwell a successful company every day, right? Yes, absolutely. Well, and again, the assumption that is there a concern in the silver space is actually diversification and growth. There's a, a, quite a positive approach to this, which sounds very, very logical to me. And, and, and Fortuna retains uh, an, 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 you know, a significant uh, contribution of silver in, in the revenue at around 20, 25, 30%, depending what prices are doing. And mm -hmm. we continue committed to identifying more silver assets in the Americas and, and uh, but you know what a good silver asset it's something you discover it's seldom mm -hmm. something you can just go buy that's why silver is so scarce mm -hmm. wonderful thank you for that perspective um, I'd love to find out uh, from an investor perspective uh, can you provide an update for us please Jorge on the, the COVID situation in Argentina and the direct impact on the current ramp-up phase uh, at Linder yes Argentina uh, has been hit hard by by COVID and uh, has been one of the countries in the region with the, um, that has implemented the most uh, restrictions uh, on, on, on citizens uh, and, uh, and foreign travel. So that has uh, had a, 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 a big impact and created a, a big challenge for our local team. As you can imagine, in a commissioning and ramp up phase, you're usually working shoulder to shoulder with your technicians and, 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 and foreign vendor representatives. Yes. You know, you, you bring equipment from abroad and, and the vendors and, and provide the technical support with, with vendor technicians. The country has been and remains largely close to foreigners. Yes. So uh, our team has been doing an excellent work, but usually problems that would be solved in a matter of hours or, or even days end up taking days or weeks because we uh, it takes a lot of zoom hours to explain a problem over zoom and and uh and things like that but the, two, the team is doing a great job and as i said at the beginning the mine has been free cash flowing positive since the first month of production Excellent. and uh and, and uh, we're there we, yes. we are out of the of the woods uh, with the ramp up and, and the equipment is fit for purpose and the performance is going well Great to hear that it's been a, a global situation, obviously, and I, I know everyone's hopeful to see things shift into a better space. So I'm glad to hear some of those points. Thank you very much. Um, if I could, uh, ask, was, Jim asks, could we please comment on Fortuna's take on the potential impact of the Peruvian elections on the company's investments and operations in the country? How about that first? Yes, time? yes. You know, uh, not only Peru, but uh, Mexico as well has mm -hmm. had an election on Sunday. Uh, the election process is not over yet. The, the election is too close to call. Mm -hmm. And uh, I expect they will be counting, counting votes and, and, and contesting votes, uh, the, the different groups, uh, for probably well into next week. I don't expect this will be uh, called off this week. No, So mm -hmm. the, the difference between the two candidates is 70,000 votes or something wow. like that. Right now. Not a simple situation. No, no, no. But uh, yeah, there is a candidate which has which which has a, 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 a position and, and, and stand that is not as, as favorable to, to to investment as presented today. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, you know what? We run our business in in countries that have uh, deep rooted mining traditions. Mm -hmm. Sixty percent of all dollars that come into the country are come from mining. Peru is, as you know, 
the fifth largest gold producer, the second largest copper producer, the third largest zinc producer, the fourth yes. largest lead producer, mm -hmm. a very important um, este, tin producer. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, I think mining will continue to be a, a, a good business and, you know, Politics in these uh, developing nations is a, a pendulum, it swings to the left, swings to the right. Mm. But, you know, mining has always been a big part of the Peruvian culture and economy, and I expect it will continue to be the case. I appreciate that. I would think these are temporary moments in the journey as opposed to the long journey that the big picture view. So I appreciate that very much. Yeah. Uh, another question comes in, uh, starting in 2022, does Fortuna intend to maintain its ratio of exploration spending as a percentage of revenue or could this ratio increase? No, right now we're spending in our budget. We have in our budget around four and a half percent of sales uh, allocated to exploration. Mm -hmm. And, uh, that is taking us to to what uh, our, our normal or no normal rate of, of uh, investment in exploration, which we dropped in the last two years because we were allocating capital to the Lindero construction in Argentina. So we had to shortchange our exploration for two years. Just as a reference, in 2017, our drilling meterage was 30,000 meters mm. across all of our properties. In 2020, it was 8,000 meters. It's clearly not enough to replace reserves and deal with depletion. And all of yes. That. In 2021, our budget is 55,000 meters. Okay. So uh, that's the rate of, 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 of drilling and, and spending investment that a company of our size needs to sustain. No? So I would expect that you know, four, four and a half percent of sales from a much larger base of sales that we would have now Mm -hmm. uh, is, is, I see that as sustainable moving forward. Terrific. Thank you for that. Uh, a question comes, where do you see Fortuna in, say, three to five years? You know, post-transaction, Fortuna, in, in three to five years, Fortuna will be operating six mines, and, mm -hmm. and those are mines that come from our portfolio, from the pro forma portfolio. Immediately after transaction, Fortuna will be operating four mines. Mm. And Seguela, the development project advancing into into construction. Yes. So within you know 24 months, and, and change will be uh, at five mines, and and I have high uh, expectations on Bosura, mm. uh, which is looking evolving as a very exciting exploration property, and uh, as I said before, I believe that in 18 months it wouldn't be surprising to see Bosura advancing to some level of scoping, right? Uh, so in a few years, I think that we have a robust pipeline. Mm -hmm. We would have a robust pipeline of opportunities to to continue growing organically, which mm -hmm. is where, where what yields the, the biggest opportunities to create best value for our investors. Right? I appreciate that. Yeah, we look forward to seeing where that goes. Uh, we do have a question uh, asking around the catalyst for potential rebound. Is there? Can you share from this perspective and, and the acceleration in share price? What are your thoughts on that? Yes, you know, uh, we announced the transaction on April 26, and the share or shares dropped what 17, 18 percent. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what you are exposed to when uh, you offer a, a, a company of our size with the type of liquidity that we have. Yes, uh, announces a, a transaction with a 40 percent premium. You just open the door to arbitrage players and, and, mm. and traders to come in. So what I, what I have seen uh, in, the la, in the first days after announcement is traders taking the initiative in the market with okay. respect to our, our, our share price or share movement. Mm. And as, as time have, has elapsed, I see more investors taking the initiative now. Right? Okay. So I see uh, the, 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 the upper hand was in the hand was by, by the traders in the initial days and now trading is fading away and we're gradually seeing the investors coming back. So the fundamentals for the business we're presenting to, to, to our investors are very sound. Okay. Uh, and, uh, you know, we're starting to see the, the positive write-ups and, you know, people understanding and, 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 and meeting with us and understanding what is it that we're doing here, right? Mm. Uh, and, and, and seeing the rationale, the fundamentals, 
and everybody clicks to the story. I have to say that at the beginning, we found that this location between the type of feedback we were getting from investors yes. and the market performance in immediately after announcement. Oh, so okay. it, it has been hard to find who is selling the shares because uh, in the initial days, because the feedback was positive from our investor base, largely positive. Yeah. And, and uh, we see, I believe, a, a confirmation of that as days elapse and in good days, Fortuna trades well with the market and in bad ma market days, uh, Fortuna shows resilience, right? Uh -huh. So, uh, you know, I believe... Uh, uh, as the market starts understanding uh, more and more the, the fundamentals here, what this means. And again, the key takeaway here is, I believe that if you're an investor in the precious metal space, you'll be hard pressed not to give serious consideration to a pro forma company just on the, based on the strength of the margins of the business, and the quality of the assets and the organic potential growth, the growth for potential. Mm -hmm. It will be just very difficult not to give serious consideration to Fortuna. Very fair. And of course, you're speaking to a community of investors. So I appreciate the point about traders versus investors as we have the community here listening in. Thank you for that. Yes. Uh, a question comes as well, Jorge. Any plans to instate a dividend policy? Yes. For us, it's not a question of if, but when. Okay. And in an ever depleting business, which is our business, mining, uh, the question is uh, not when do you implement the dividend, uh, is when can you implement a sustainable dividend? Mm, understood. Right. Yeah. So, so for us, the the the, uh, the the question of sustainability on the dividend is fundamental, and mm. that's something that you have to really work hard to build. And I, I would you know value investors getting in our shoes, yeah. but we have to deal with the depletion of the assets, invest heavily, but Fortuna slowly but steadily has been putting together a platform of assets. You know, where we can start to see uh, the opportunities to institute that type of dividend, you know, the, the, a sustainable dividend, a meaningful and sustainable dividend. You know, Lindero, which is now in production, mm -hmm. has will be producing gold for 15 years at least. Okay. No? Seguela, uh, mm -hmm. uh, coming along with the Roxville portfolio. The loan is for nine years. Plus, because I, we have high expectations on the exploration potential. You see Bosura coming in. You see Yaramoco uh, extending life of mine, you know, or, or, or projections for San Jose in, in, in Mexico and Cayoma in Peru. So with that kind of asset base and those kind of life of mines, it's now that we can seriously start talking about a sustainable dividend, which is, I believe, what should be in the minds of our investor, not just a dividend, but Pay me something that can be sustainable yes. and meaningful. Uh, so, yeah. and, and that's something we've been working towards. And I believe this construction, this transaction is constructive on that mm -hmm. because of the quality of the assets, the margins of the business, and the exploration opportunities that we have within the portfolio. I appreciate that. I hear depth and longevity, which are two key terms everyone's looking for in the world of investment. I appreciate that. Now, Jorge, just as we wind down, is there anything that we've missed or anything else that comes to mind to share for our audience today? No, uh, you know, this is a, a, a big transaction uh, for us, I believe is uh, transformative and uh, we're just extremely excited about and, and really looking forward to, to capture all of this for the benefit of Roxwell shareholders and Fortuna shareholders, right? I believe that there, there is a, a compelling value proposition here for immediately for investors and, and moving forward. As, as we grow the, the business to it. Wonderful, I appreciate that. It's always a pleasure, Jorge, to speak to the thought leaders behind a brand, behind a company that are making decisions. And to get that insight for us as we make choices on investment uh, is always a wise move on our part to explore and to research. So thank you for what you've brought today, much appreciated. And we'll, we'll wind down our session today. A pleasure to be here, Mark.